I'm Seth Grimes. I'm here for a short conversation with Talib Alashkar from AlgoFace. Talib, it's good to have you online today. So uh, you're going to be speaking at the upcoming Emotion AI conference on May 5th on artificial intelligence that sees all human faces. The implication there is that some AI doesn't see some faces. Would you please explain? Yes, actually, one of the main challenge in AI system nowadays is a bias that we have in the data. Like, you know, long time ago in any algorithm, there was this term garbage in, garbage out to refer to some problem in the algorithm. It would give you bad result. Actually, this concept is still very true now in the machine learning AI age because your system usually is as good as your data that you are training this system. Due to a lot of reasons, like in many circumstances, the available data sets that we are using to train our critical AI systems are not diverse enough, are not inclusive enough, and it has a lot of bias. One of the very common bias in like, I want now to talk just about something related to human face because this is my domain of work and expertise. Like when like, there's a lot of bias uh, against or like people with color in the face data set because in most training data set those this data set is ha somehow biased or like there's no enough representation for different people from different ethnic groups and different backgrounds so when you like train your model on like dominated uh, data set with certain kind of people like, and then you put it in action, actually it will work good on the data that you provide a similar subject, but unfortunately you will start to fail in certain, for certain people, for example, it will not detect very like people with deep skin color, maybe it will misrepresent them, and maybe like for, like it was also very common example about one of the giant in industry training data set with database with police and like we can see that there's a huge portion of people in law enforcement mugshot data set with people with color then when they start to roll out the system in action it start to give high false positive with people with color and lo much lower po false positive with like people with lighter skin color. And this is really problematic. So you have started a company called AlgoFace, which applies work that you've done in uh, computer vision, facial recognition, and so on. What makes AlgoFace different? Presumably, according to what you've just said, you're much more careful with the training data. Are there other elements there, algorithms, processes, something else? What makes AlgoFace different? Actually, Everything starts from the culture before you, we go like to technical, technical details and how you implement, how you collect data and how you envision what is your data strategy or algorithm development or testing strategy. I believe everything starts from the culture of the people who are behind this company and the team member. The fact that like out of face, I have started this initiative around two years and a half and like we grown fast, we are around 15 full-time people now. And what was very interesting, we have very diverse team, like being here in US, working with people out, like international people outside. We have very good diversity in people in gender, in ethnic backgrounds, in cultures. That make our, and since we are dealing with face data, that make everybody in the team is very sensitive and careful about how we are developing our system, how this system will work. And, and everything starts from the culture because by the end of the day, every step that you are taking in your product development that you will put it in the hand of people, like 
it comes from the mind of people like product manager or visionary people in this company or like how they are envisioning these problems. So we have very diverse inclusive team, unfortunately, number one. And I believe that diversity in the age of AI is not something nice that multi-billion dollar company doing for marketing and branding. I believe it goes much more beyond that. It really is give you a lot of different perspective. When you are like brainstorming and like discussing or even testing your product, like it is very, very valuable when you have in your team, like, people from different gender, from different culture, from different skin color, certainly they start to feed you with a lot of different perspective. Also the fact that I'm from Middle East, I started in Europe and then moved to US. I have experienced multiple different culture in my, mind, in my life. So I'm a little bit more exposed to how those system might where they might make problem, where might not. So right. this is, I would say this is a main reason. If you want to go to technical levels, certainly number one data, like uh, we are investing heavily in our data strategy. Most of startup decide to outsource these tasks to other companies. Uh, uh, Unlike many of other startups that I'm aware of, we didn't. We have built our own data team overseas. We collect our own data. We label our own data. We clean our own data by our own team who are trained by us, who are like onboarded by our own quality and standards and values to feed those data to our system. Right. So, this was very critical decision that we have made in early stage and like it came out to be very, very true because when you try to work with like those outsourcing companies, it is very difficult to transfer your culture to them. Other elements in addition to the data that make you different. Uh, so there's the culture of your organization, uh, uh, the, the data that you're handling it yourself uh, and can be especially uh, sensitive to the, uh, the bias tendencies since um, effectively a lot of you have uh, lived in a world that, uh, that prioritizes white people. Yeah. yeah. So your own experience, you, you earned a PhD from the University of Lille in France. Uh, you've worked in combining deep adversarial learning with machine vision to create highly immersive uh, AR experiences focused on the human face. Uh, that's augmented reality. Uh, you've surfaced that work in AgoFaces products. I'm hoping that you'll give us a quick demo, uh, at least you better since I asked you to prepare for that, just to show us the technology uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah. Set up for a screen share? Yeah. Uh, like I will run like in algo face we have we are focusing on AI on the edge oriented for human face technology which is very very important element so now I will like demo one of the fundamental technology we call face trace or one of the most detailed and depth facial landmark tracker that can capture a lot of information in real time from your face yeah, I will so run like live demo and I see it on my face in like real time now. Part out of the video. Yeah. So actually, yeah, this is our facial landmark tracker. And we can see like we have super depth tracking technology that can capture every subtle facial movement on your face. It can identify your face. It can identify your iris where you are looking at. And you can identify your head pose and it can identify a lot of other features like eye blinking. We can see this like uh, green uh, plot. It like detect how many times you are blinking and for how long. And the uh, blue one detecting like your mouse. Like when you are talking, we have this a little bit of movement. When you are yawning, for example, you can see this blue line goes very high. This is fundamental technology that runs on the edge and it capture a lot of facial uh, subtle motion. 
And we are using this technology as fundamental for different applications, one of them to have very robust and accurate facial action unit reading and emotion uh, recognition, engagement for online platform in COVID-19, like teaching online is becoming like more popular. You can measure your engagement. Actually, there's a lot of use cases of this technology, part of it, it goes to drive our passenger marching system in automotive industry as well. And it also it can play a very important role for like augmented reality for human face. Like upon this, we developed a complete solution for beauty industry, for example, uh, to try cosmetic online uh, for e-commerce. And we had a lot of interest coming back to the bias that we have, we got a lot of interest from those companies when like we get this feedback in constant constantly like your technology is working on all skin colors and this is why we would like to work with you yeah that that was a particular reason that i reached out to you and your colleagues about this conference we do actually have people from uh, these two very prominent cosmetics companies who have uh, signed up to attend the conference uh, and I think that this is exactly the kind of thing that they will want to learn about is how you uh, handle emotion detection and other signals such as attention and engagement in a de-biased fashion uh, in a way that will, uh, as per the title of your Emotion AI conference talk, uh, look at all faces uh, without bias. So we'll wrap up here. Uh, thank you, Talib, for having this conversation with me today, and I'm looking forward to next week. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to talk to you, and I'm looking forward to participate and attend this nice conference.